Yoga Vasista. Salutations to that calm effulgence, which is endless and unlimited by space or time. The pure consciousness which can be known by experience only. Neither one who is totally ignorant, nor one who knows the truth, is eligible to study this book. Only one who thinks, I am bound, I must become free, is entitled to study it. Until one is definitely blessed by the Supreme Lord, they will not find either a proper guru or the right scripture. Just as a steady boat, O Rama, is obtained from a boatman, so also the method of crossing the ocean of samsara is learnt by associating with great souls. The great remedy for the long-lasting disease of samsara is the inquiry, who am I? To whom does this samsara belong? which entirely cures it. The company of sages converts emptiness into fullness, death into immortality, and adversity into prosperity. If sages were concerned solely with their own happiness, with whom could those tormented by the sorrows of samsara seek refuge? That which is imparted to a worthy disciple who has become dispassionate is the real wisdom. It is the real purport of the sacred texts and is also the comprehensive wisdom. Following the customary method of teaching is only for preserving the tradition Pure awareness results solely from the clarity of the disciples' understanding. All the arts acquired by humans are lost by lack of practice. But this art of wisdom grows steadily once it rises. Just as an ornament worn around the neck is considered lost through forgetfulness and is gained when the mistake is realised, so also the self is attained when the delusion is removed by the words of the guru. One is indeed an unfortunate person who, not knowing their own self, takes pleasure in sense objects. 
like one who realizes too late that the food eaten by them was poisonous. Even the slightest thought immerses a person in sorrow. When devoid of all thoughts, they enjoy imperishable bliss. Just as we experience the delusion of hundreds of years in a dream lasting an hour, so also we experience the sport of Maya in our waking state. One is happy, whose mind is inwardly cool and free from attachment and hatred, and who looks upon this world like a mere spectator. One who has understood well how to abandon all ideas of acceptance and rejection, and who has realized the consciousness which is within the innermost heart. Their life is illustrious. On the dissolution of the body, the consciousness limited by the heart alone ceases to exist. People lament needlessly that the self is extinct. When pots are broken, the space within them becomes unlimited. So also when bodies cease to exist, the self remains eternal and unattached. Nothing whatever is born or dies anywhere, at any time. It is reality, Brahman, alone, appearing illusory in the form of the world. The self is more extensive than space. It is pure, subtle, undecaying and auspicious. As such, how could it be born and how can it die? All this is the tranquil, one without beginning, middle or end, which cannot be said to be existent or non-existent. Know this and be happy. O oh Rama, it is indeed nobler to wander begging around the streets of the outcasts, an earthen bowl in hand, than to live a life steeped in ignorance. Neither disease nor poison, nor adversity, nor any other thing in the world causes more suffering to people than such stupidity engendered in their bodies.
Just as the great ocean of milk became still, when the Mandara mountain became still, even so, the illusion of samsara comes to an end when the mind is stilled. Samsara arises when the mind becomes active and ceases when it is still. Still the mind, therefore, by controlling the breath and the latent desires, the vasanas. This worthless, burnt-out samsara is born of one's imagination and vanishes in the absence of imagination. It is certain that it is absolutely insubstantial. The idea of a live snake in a picture of a snake ceases to be entertained when the truth is known. Similarly, samsara ceases to exist when the truth is realized. Even if it continues to appear, This long-living ghost of a samsara, which is the creation of the deluded mind and the cause of suffering, disappears when one ponders over it. Whatever is seen does not truly exist. It is like the mythical city of Gandharvas or a mirage. That which is not seen, though within us, is called the eternal and indestructible self. Just as the trees on the bank of a lake are reflected in the water, so also all these varied objects are reflected in the vast mirror of our consciousness. It is because of that which always, of its own accord, imagines everything quickly and freely, that this magical show of the world is projected in the waking state. Towns, houses, mountains, serpents, 
are all, in the eyes of the ignorant, separate objects. From the absolute point of view, this objective world is the subject, the self itself. It is not separate from the self. Like waves rising up from the ocean, the unstable mind rises out of the vast and stable expanse of the Supreme Self. Even though bondage does not really exist, it becomes strong through desire for worldly enjoyments. When this desire subsides, bondage becomes weak. The world is full of misery to an ignorant person and full of bliss to a wise one. The world is dark to a blind man and bright to one who has eyes. This fascinating world rises like a wave in the ambrosial ocean of consciousness and dissolves in it. How then can it be different from consciousness in the middle when it appears? Just as the foam, the waves, the dew and the bubbles are not different from the water. Even so this world which has come out of the self is not different from the self. It is only our forgetfulness of the invisible self which causes the world to appear just as the ignorance of the rope causes a snake to appear.
just as the dream becomes unreal in the waking state and the waking state in the dream so also death becomes unreal in birth and birth in death All these are thus neither real nor unreal. They are the effect of delusion, mere impressions arising out of some past experiences. One who realizes that the whole universe is really nothing but consciousness and remains quite calm is protected by the armor of reality. They are happy. The yogi who has attained the state which is beyond everything and remains always cool as the full moon is truly the Supreme Lord. One who reflects in their innermost heart upon the purport of the Upanishads dealing with reality and is not moved by joy and sorrow, is not tormented by samsara. Just as birds and beasts do not take shelter on a mountain of fire, so also evil thoughts never occur to a knower of reality. Even while they are intent on outward actions, the knower of truth always remains introverted and extremely calm, like one asleep. firmly convinced of non-duality and enjoying perfect mental peace, yogis go about their work 
seeing the world as if it were a dream. Let death come to the knower of truth today or at the end of eons. They remain untarnished like gold buried in Maya. Like an empty vessel in space, the knower of truth is empty, both within and without, while at the same time they are full, within and without, like a vessel immersed in the ocean. One who neither likes nor dislikes the objects seen by them and who acts in the world like one asleep is said to be a liberated person. One who has easily cast off all their egotistic tendencies and has abandoned even the object of meditation is said to be liberated even when they are in the body. If, by perceiving that the objects of perception do not really exist, the mind is completely freed from them, there ensues a supreme bliss of liberation. Liberation is not on the other side of the sky, nor is it in the netherworld, nor on the earth. The extinction of the mind, resulting from the eradication of all desires, is regarded as liberation.
O Rama, there is no intellect, no nescience, no mind, and no individual soul. They are all imagined in reality. The mind has, by its own activity, bound itself. When it is calm, it is free. Consciousness which is undivided imagines to itself desirable objects and runs after them. It is then known as the mind. From this omnipresent and omnipotent Supreme Lord arose like ripples in water the power of imagining separate objects. The mind has come into existence through this imagination on account of forgetfulness. Like the experience of one's own death in a dream, it ceases to exist when scrutinized. This is he. I am this, that is mine. Such ideas constitute the mind. It disappears when one ponders over these false ideas. It is the nature of the mind to accept certain things and to reject others. This is bondage, nothing else. The mind is the cause of the objects of perception. The three worlds depend upon it. When it is dissolved, the world is also dissolved. It is to be purified with effort.
when one knows the real truth about acceptance and rejection and does not think of anything but abides in themselves, abandoning everything. Their mind does not come into existence. The mind is samsara. The mind is also said to be bondage. The body is activated by the mind, just as a tree is shaken by the wind. Does not the fool feel ashamed to move about in the world as they please and talk about meditation when they are not able to conquer even the mind? The only God to be conquered is the mind. Its conquest leads to the attainment of everything. Without its conquest, all other efforts are fruitless. Association with the wise, abandonment of latent impressions, self-inquiry, control of breathing, these are the means of conquering the mind. The mind becomes bound by thinking I am not reality. It becomes completely released by thinking, I am reality. When the mind is abandoned, Everything that is dual or single is dissolved. What remains after that is the supreme reality, peaceful, eternal, and free from misery. There is nothing to equal the supreme joy felt by a person of pure mind who has attained the state of pure consciousness and overcome death. O oh Rama, this inquiry into the self, or the nature of who am I, 
is the fire which burns up the seeds of the evil tree, which is the mind. To one who has realized the self by inquiry, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva are objects of compassion. To one who is fond of inquiring constantly, what is this vast universe and who am I? This world becomes quite unreal. Latent impressions cease to be active when one associates with sages, discards all thoughts of samsara and remembers that the body has to die. When this body is taken to be real, it serves the purpose of a body. But when it is seen to be unreal, it becomes like unsubstantial space. O oh Rama, while lying on a soft bed, you wander about in all directions with a dream body. But now in this waking state, where is that body? One should discard the thought, I am the body, even if everything were to be lost. When the aspirant thinks only of reality and remains calm and free from sorrows, their egoity dies of itself. If one realizes the unity of things everywhere, one always remains tranquil, inwardly cool and pure like space, without the sense of I. If inwardly one is cool, the whole world will be cool. But if inwardly one is hot and agitated, the whole world will be a burning mass.
I, the pure, stainless and infinite consciousness beyond Maya, look upon this body in action like the body of another. The mind, the intellect, the senses are all the play of consciousness. They are unreal and seem to exist only due to lack of insight. Unmoved by adversity, a friend of all the world in prosperity, without ideas of existence and non-existence, I live free from misery. Inactive am I, desireless, clear as the sky, free from hankering, tranquil, formless, everlasting and unmoving. now clearly understood that the five elements, the three worlds, and I myself, are pure consciousness. I am above everything. I am present everywhere. I am like space. I am that which really exists. I am unable to say anything beyond this. Let imaginary waves of universe rise or fall in me, who am the ocean of infinite consciousness. There is no increase or decrease in me. How wonderful that in me, the infinite ocean of consciousness, waves of individual souls rise, sport for a while, and disappear according to their nature. I prostrate to myself, who am within all beings, the ever-free self, abiding as inner consciousness.
O Raghava, be outwardly active, but inwardly inactive. Outwardly a doer, but inwardly a non-doer. And thus play your part in the world. Abandon all desires inwardly. Be free from attachments and latent impressions. Do everything outwardly and thus play your part in the world. Burn the forest of duality with the fire of the conviction. I am the one pure consciousness and remain happy. Discarding the attachment to non-self, regarding the world as a partless whole, concentrated and with attention turn inward, remain as pure consciousness. Remain always as pure consciousness, which is your constant, true nature, beyond the states of waking, dream and deep sleep. Do not be that which is understood, nor the one who understands. Abandon all concepts and remain what you are. Eliminate one concept by another, and the mind by the mind, and abide in the self. What a vast difference between the flesh and the blood, and you, the embodiment of consciousness. Even after knowing this, why do you not abandon the idea of self in this body?
there is neither I nor any other thing. Only reality exists, always full of bliss everywhere. Meditate on this calmly. When this assemblage of body or senses acts of its own accord, there arises an idea, I am this. This is the ego stained by the dirt of ignorance. When the conviction that everything is a space-like, all-pervasive consciousness becomes firm, the ego comes to an end like a lamp without oil. Just as a child sees an apparition created by its own fancy, so also the stupid ego creates on account of delusion this unreal body and sees it as separate from them. Just as a single face is reflected as many in a crystal, in water, or in a mirror, so also the oneself is reflected in the many intellects or mind. The self is without beginning or end. It is immutable existence and consciousness. It manifests space. It is the source of the individual self and higher than the highest. The omnipresent self, the substratum of all, is non-different from the effulgent consciousness, like heat from fire. It can only be experienced, not known. The self is absolute consciousness. It is pure awareness, undecaying, free from all ideas of acceptance or rejection, and not limited by space, time, or genus.
There is neither bondage nor liberation, neither duality nor non-duality. There is only reality, always shining as consciousness. Awareness is reality. The world is reality. The various elements are reality. I am reality. My enemy is reality. My friends and relatives are reality. There is only consciousness here. This universe is nothing but consciousness. You are consciousness. I am consciousness. The worlds are consciousness. That is the conclusion. Attain the pure state between existence and non-existence and hold on to it. Do not accept or reject the inner or the outer world. Depend always on that true reality between the sentient and the inert, which is the infinite space-like heart. The belief in a knower and the known is called bondage. The knower is bound by the known. They are liberated when there is nothing to know. Abandoning the ideas of seer, seen, and sight, along with latent desires of the past, we meditate on that self, which is the primal light, that is the basis of sight. We meditate on the eternal self, the light of lights, which lies between the two ideas of existence and non-existence.
If one meditates on that state which comes at the end of the waking state and the beginning of sleep, they will directly experience undecaying bliss. The rock-like state in which all thoughts are still and which is different from the waking and dream states is one supreme state. Reality and space are alike as to their invisibility, all pervasiveness and indestructibility. But reality is also consciousness. As soon as it is realized that reality is all pervasive and indivisible, this vast samsara is found to be the Supreme Lord. Know always that the self is reality, one and whole. How can that which is indivisible be divided into I am the meditator and the other is the object of meditation? Let violent winds which characterize the end of eons blow. Let all the oceans unite. Let the twelve suns burn simultaneously. Still no harm befalls one whose mind is extinct. That consciousness which is the witness of the rise and fall of all beings, know that to be the immortal state of supreme bliss. That which is immutable, auspicious and tranquil. 
that in which this world exists, that which manifests itself as the mutable and immutable objects, that is the soul consciousness. Just as still water may be said to contain or not contain ripples, so also reality may be said to contain or not contain the world. It is neither void nor existence.